After three months of trying to build a tiny houseboat from scratch, I'm finally right on the edge of making some very satisfying progress, finishing the construction of the hull. I cannot wait to flip this thing over and start building a little house on top, but first it's time to tackle the last bit of hull construction and hope that it doesn't completely emotionally destroy me. I'm plumb out of excuses to delay putting the rest of the hull together for any longer, and I'm just feeling nervous about it. I think I just gotta do it before I think myself out of it. Gorda was gone, I was on my own again, and the rest of the whole assembly was feeling especially daunting. Messing this up would mean making the rest of the build a huge annoying struggle and also potentially causing the boat to not even float right, and that pressure to get it perfect made me want to just not do it. But I forced myself outside, only to find that the soggy snowfall from the night before had caused my shelter to partially collapse. I'd managed to finish the final piece of framing, much more easily than the one on the other side, I may add. And now came the nerve-wracking part, making sure all the pieces lined up and everything fit snugly so I could add some epoxy and make the whole thing permanent. Getting this 17 foot long piece where I was supposed to go by myself was struggle enough, but scooching it around to get it to line up perfectly with the bulkheads was something else altogether. I ended up putting a screw in one bulkhead to keep it from falling, then adjusting another bulkhead little by little, moving the screw as needed until I finally had it right where I wanted it. Not too bad. Now I needed to make sure there were no unruly bits sticking out on either the side panel or the bulkheads that would keep me from getting a tight fit between the two. So I removed the panel and started trimming a little at a time. I was not prepared for how tedious this would be. There was marking, and trimming, and wiggling, and scooching, and more trimming, and head scratching, and getting screws stuck. since the early bus build days. Oh, oops. I was starting to get worried because eventually it started to seem like every single bulkhead was going to need a trim. And if I had done everything right up until this point, I thought the fit should have been a lot closer to perfect than it was turning out. Luckily, before I managed to start hacking up three months worth of work, my neighbor came out and taught me something new. Some 1x4s are actually one inch thick instead of three quarter inch like usual, and that's the kind I had managed to buy. That was making the entire bottom edge of the panel a quarter inch too thick to fit into the bulkheads as I'd built them. With that discovery, I decided I'd had quite enough for one day. It's incredible how many hours I just worked on that to do what seems like <laughs> basically nothing. It wasn't nothing. I am being diligent here. You would not believe how diligent I am being. I'm just trying to make sure every little thing is trimmed the way it needs to be and every little piece is square the way it needs to be and all the measurements are right and everything's looking good before I put any epoxy on there. You guys know I'm not good at staying on task when stuff gets tedious. I just want to skip through it and get to the satisfying part, but I did today. So by golly, if this doesn't end up right, it won't be for lack of trying for once. Totally soaked myself just now trying to get the water on my roof. The next morning met me with more soggy weather. Remind me to never trust my weather app ever again. The 
The first task of the day was to correct the mistake I'd discovered the day before. It was decided that the best thing for me to do would be to use a router to remove a quarter inch of material from the framing wherever it meets the bulkheads to allow for the tight fit that I was looking for. This was surprisingly not a very big pain in the butt, so for the life of me, I cannot remember why this appears to be the only thing I accomplished that entire day. Or at least the only thing I filmed. I don't want to jinx anything, but I think today might be the day when I finally start seeing the payoff for all of the tedious, unsatisfying work I've been doing. I feel good about today. This was one of those rare times when a mistake actually ends up helping. The notches in the panel made it a lot easier to line up the bulkheads. I brought out some ratchet straps to cinch the whole thing together just to make sure everything fit exactly right before I made a mess of it all with glue and screws. The first side looked good, so I took the straps off and took the other side down to make the same notches. This seems like a good time to thank the real MVPs of this boat build. First, of course, being my neighbor. Second, being this melted milk crate that Gordo accidentally left here and third being my poor, battered right knee. Ow! I realized I'd forgotten one of the router notches, so I knocked that out real quick, then made this very sad looking effort to get the panel back up. I think perhaps the most exciting part of finishing this step is just the fact that I never again have to handle nor fill up my entire workbench with these way too long panels. I'd forgotten the same notch on the other side as well, so down it came once again. Then I put the ratchet straps back in place one more time just to make sure and at this point I was also probably just trying to stall a little bit because I was nervous to glue it all together. Okay. You're up. Do it before I get too nervous. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> Talk yourself out of it. Just mix up some epoxy and start getting it. <laughs> I'm still kind of nervous about this, but you know what? I've been working on trying to get it right for three days, so if I haven't done it by now, I probably never will. I talked before about how this stuff looks like cinnamon roll filling, but with this, with the cedar shavings in here, it looks a lot more like baby poop. I still need to go back out there and clean everything up, but I just 
fully smushed the entire end of my ponytail in between two pieces of wood with epoxy on them. So um, I might be getting a haircut. <laughs> this is what I used last time. I don't know why, nobody told me to do this. I just sort of did it and it seemed like it worked, so. Ugh. All right, well, as annoyed at myself I was <laughs> last video and as little as has actually changed on the boat since then, it probably doesn't make any sense for me to feel this way, but I'm feeling very accomplished. I can't help feeling a little bit proud of myself. I mean, it's been almost three months since I started working on the boat and I essentially have a hole. Just gotta slap a couple of more sheets of plywood in those gaps and it'll be built. And that, since the day I found the plans for this boat, that's been the most intimidating part of this whole prospect was the actual construction of the hole. And I can say right here, right now, that that is pretty much behind me. <laughs> it's just a really good feeling. There's still a lot that comes before I can actually start building the house part of the houseboat because, I mean, I still do have to finish putting the hole together. Then I have to trim it all down and get it all smooth and then I have to fiberglass it and then I have to paint it and then I have to add runners. And then I have to somehow flip the whole thing over onto a trailer, which I don't yet own. <laughs> so there's still quite a long way to go before the actual house part even begins, but I'm just feeling good today. Didn't I say it? Didn't I say I had a good feeling about today? And actually directly after I said that, I almost chickened out and didn't even get to work because it was cold outside, but look at us now. Right now I'm gonna reward myself with a cherry Pepsi. I woke up this morning with the nagging worry that I, that my, my boat's not gonna be straight. What actually happened is that I, somebody else who's building this boat said that they had to fix theirs because it's a parallelogram, and that sent me to thinking, well, if somebody else accidentally made it a parallelogram, I must have. I mean, I checked every little piece a gazillion times to make sure it was square, so I don't know. I don't know what would have happened, but it would not be far-fetched to think that there's some element I forgot to check. In fact, it would be far-fetched to think there isn't something I forgot. <laughs> so I'm gonna check again once I get out there. I've been having a hard time getting working on the boat very early in the morning. I think just because it's kind of cold. Lately I've been getting up early with good intentions and then just sort of dragging my feet to get out there. The last couple days I just accepted. Probably I'm only gonna work on the boat for a few hours in the middle of the day and that way I can work on other stuff in here instead of wasting all morning just like trying to force myself to get outside and, and not doing it, not doing anything else either. So yeah, I'm not, I'm not going out there yet, but once I get out there I'll I don't know what I'm gonna check that I haven't already checked, but I'm just gonna check again, make sure it's square, make sure it looks okay. Oh my gosh. And suddenly I was in the home stretch for finishing the entire hole. starting to look like I'd have the whole thing done within the hour until I brought out the first piece for the bow curve. Right here. So I'm gonna have to buy two more pieces of 
Fuck, welcome construction, young lady. <laughs> <laughs> you think everybody just does the shit the first time, one time? Hell it no. It seems like, yeah. No. <laughs> yeah, you never can get it just right. <laughs> good news and bad news I have to go buy some more plywood I was already going to have to buy one more piece of plywood if I could rewind five minutes before I just made that last cut I would still only need to buy one piece of plywood because I failed to account for the extra width I need because of the bend I'm still not sure I understand why I need more to be honest but Good news, I guess, is that I could have gone and bought the plywood and made the bad cut in my new piece of plywood, which would mean I would need three more pieces of plywood. So I, gu I guess the good news is just that I need two more instead of one more, but at least it's not three more, if that makes sense. Anyway, I'm <laughs> confused about these curvy pieces. The, the plans give no indication that this part is as tricky as it really seems like it's gonna be, which makes me nervous that I actually did something wrong on some previous step that's making it trickier than it's supposed to be. But I don't know what. <laughs> the other good news is that I'm not as nervous to go to the plywood store as I used to be. So I guess I am counting my <laughs> small victories right now. I take it back. <laughs> I still hated that. It just feels awkward and I don't know why everybody seems so grumpy. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully I don't mess up anymore. I don't have to buy any more unplanned marine plywood. Things just change so fast on this whole boat building thing. Yesterday, I was feeling so good. Today, I'm like, why am I doing this again? Although, if and when I manage to get these curvy, twisty pieces installed correctly, I'm sure I'll be flying high once more. After double checking the plans to make sure that I had not in fact built the entire structure wrong, I got my brand new extra wide piece of plywood into place. I added some blocks to help it hold the curve and secured it so that it was overlapping the center plywood. Then I marked the overhang with a pencil so that it could be cut off. not think that is an acceptable gap. And it looks like it's because I didn't make this cut perfectly. I think it's time to turn the camera off for tonight. For whatever reason, this totally expected step in the process had me so discouraged that I went inside, had a good cry, and convinced myself I was going to need to scrap the entire project. And then I got outside the next day, gave the piece one more tiny trim, and it was good to go. This project never fails to be an emotional roller coaster.
the moment of truth. I can't really believe it, but it looks pretty okay. The sun was shining, I was suddenly feeling like a building goddess with all the motivation to just keep working into the night, but as luck would have it, I had somewhere to be. So I got the plywood for the other side bent into place and waiting for me when I got back to it a couple days later. Leave it to me to have an obligation for once in my life, the same day my motivation finally comes back, and it's sunny. It's okay, I still have most of the motivation, I think. No. <laughs> I think I just got a perfect fit on my first try. Okay, it's actually not anywhere near as close to perfect as I thought, but for some reason right now that discovery feels like more, more like progress than a setback. It's getting windy. I have to actually go right now, but I'm gonna be back in a couple hours and I'm gonna get this so dialed in. Okay, well, looking pretty good. I've taken 10 times longer than I thought it would, but I have a hole. All right, time for the easy part, right? Mm -hmm. 